Hello, everyone. Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Ben Perkins. I am the field sales engineer for Biamp in the uh, Western US. Um, thank you for joining today. Um, we're going to talk today about uh, potential solutions for blended classrooms um, that leverage UC platforms like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Google Meet to allow for concurrent remote and in-person participation. Um, I'm also going to talk briefly about uh, our CrowdMic solution for um, uh, maybe higher ed uh, that uh, limits the need to pass around wireless microphones uh, for local audience participation. Um, going to uh, sort of do a broad strokes uh, overview of everything. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, type them in uh, in the question section. And there's a little bit of time at the end to uh, we'll go over them or we can follow up later and get you answers to those questions. Um, and uh, also want to mention that we're going to be recording this and we'll send this out uh, to um, everyone at the end along with a copy of the PowerPoint. So um, you will be receiving that shortly after this webinar. With that, we will uh, uh, jump in. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, what our goals are for a touchless classroom. Um, specifically in leveraging uh, UC platforms for remote participants and uh, how do we interface with an AV system uh, without needing to touch anything? How can we do that wirelessly? Uh, we're also uh, gonna do a review of our extraordinary conferencing technology. We're leveraging that to make this remote learning uh, possible. Um, Modana Hub is how we do that contactless presentation USB, so we're going to dive into that. It's a relatively new product from us. And then um, on the topic of uh, uh, Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Google Meet, we're going to talk about some UC platforms, uh, our UC bundles that we have. Um, and then I'll dive into crowd mics. And uh, finally, we'll have some time for some uh, Q&A. So, uh, Again, feel free to uh, type in your questions and we'll get to them at the end. Um, and with that, we'll uh, move on. So what are our goals when we're talking about AV classrooms? Um, I'm not trying to present this as the you know end all solution. This is just sort of, uh, we know things are changing constantly and we're in a uh, huge moment of flux uh, right now. So. Uh, this is just sort of a you know beginning to the conversation of what something from Biamp could look like uh, to facilitate uh, a contactless classroom to support uh, blended learning. So um, uh, I think the key takeaway for from this presentation is that our platform is very flexible. So as things change, uh, we'll we'll be able to to uh, adapt our systems to that. Um, things like our beam tracking microphones and um, and other things so um, our goals for contactless classroom are you know we want to keep our students engaged right it's uh, uh, very difficult to uh, maintain engagement with students when they're sitting at home on zoom so we want to make sure that they're able to hear uh, the teacher and the participants locally uh, so that they don't zone out um, along those same lines we want to be able to uh, potentially support a blended learning environment. So when there's students both in the classroom and remote at the same time, uh, we want to minimize or eliminate the contact between the AV technology and the instructor and students. So how do we uh, keep people from sharing a microphone? How do we keep people from uh, touching cables uh, when they don't, uh, you know, we, we, we want to minimize as much contact, uh, shared contact uh, as we can. And most importantly, we want it to be easy for staff staff to operate. We aren't going to have time to, uh, you know, retrain everybody to use a brand new system. So we want to be able to incorporate uh, known workflows and leverage uh, the knowledge that we have uh, in order to create a seamless transition to these uh, contactless systems. So we're going to sort of look at this as an example classroom. 
it's more, uh, this sort of is geared towards K-12, but we can uh, obviously extrapolate this into sort of a lecture hall environment uh, with more microphones and speakers as needed. Um, but for now, we're going to uh, look at uh, this classroom. You can see our uh, AV system here. We'll go through each one of these uh, separately, but we've got our uh, Tessera Forte, which is our main uh, DSP platform that Biamp has. It's sort of the brain of the system. Uh, moving on, our beam tracking microphones in our Parlay TCMX. Uh, these are uh, microphones that uh, adapt to the environment and will constantly track uh, talkers in the space without outside intervention. So these are sort of set and forget and they'll just manage themselves. Um, our Tessera XUBT is our USB interface. Uh, between the Biamp system and the soft codec, like Zoom or Teams. Um, so that is a, a key component. Our DeSono CIC6 speakers are designed for intelligibility in a conferencing application. Uh, and they have a few features we'll talk about that make them easy to incorporate into a, into a complete Biamp package. And then the Tessera Connect TC5 is sort of the glue that holds all this together. It's our media connection device. So everything plugs into the TC5 and it manages the AV network um, without needing to set anything up. It just sort of, uh, just sort of knows all the devices and uh, makes installation uh, super easy. So we'll dive into our um, complete room audio solution. Uh, again, this is probably review for a lot of people, but uh, just in case, um, the brain of, of our audio system is our DSP. This is our Tessera Forte. Uh, the one pictured here is a VT4, but we have uh, four versions of it. Um, it's a single RU fixed architecture DSP. Um, the VT4 has four inputs, which is what that number four means. All of them have, uh, all the inputs have acoustic echo canceling, uh, which is important if we're uh, in a uh, soft codec zoom environment. Uh, four analog inputs, and it uh, will actually. Th this is what this is what uh, sort of sets. Uh, you set this once, and then the system is leveraging its DSP to run itself. So um, this is going to do things like uh, keep the microphones at the right level with automatic gain control. It's going to mix all the microphones down into the single feed that goes to the soft codec. It's doing all the things that uh, uh, you're not going to want to train a, an instructor how to do. So um, sort of the, the key component. Um, our Parlay beam tracking microphones is the next thing we'll talk about. These uh, recently won a Red Dot Design Award for our X series, which is the, uh, the flush mount and the table mount. Um, these are incredibly easy to set up for the ceiling mics. All you do is you set the height above the finished floor and uh, it is constantly uh, uh, tracking and steering to talkers in the room. So in this animation, you can see as a talker moves around the room, it'll actually follow and maintain uh, that aim on the talker uh, with its uh, three or four zones, depending on what mic microphone you have. Um, the pendant has three zones and the flush mount and the table have four zones. But the important thing to note is as people move around the room, these our microphones are going to constantly be um, tracking to the talkers and uh, and uh, with our beam weighting and our speech sense, we can actually uh, tell these mics to not track to any extra noise in the room like paper rustling or anything like that. So. Uh, very intelligent microphones, very easy to set up, and they're flexible. So uh, with uh, things changing as far as capacities or safe uh, distancing, if uh, the furniture in a classroom needs to change, we don't need to reset the microphones because they're going to adapt to that new uh, layout and keep tracking to talkers regardless of where they are in the room. Uh, next, we'll talk about the XUBT. This is our USB connection for audio to any room PC or bring your own device that's running a conferencing software like Zoom or Teams. Um, the benefit of our XUBT is that it's uh, 
a network device. So it's essentially a USB extender. We do have a USB port on the back of the Tessera Forte, but a lot of times the rack is not anywhere close to where somebody would plug a laptop in. So we can use this device. It's PoE powered and it can go anywhere in the uh, classroom uh, and it will facilitate that audio connection from the DSP to the uh, soft codec like Zoom or Teams. I mentioned our CIC6 ceiling speakers. These are our BIAMP designed ceiling speakers. Um, they offer a very wide dispersion, about 130 degrees, so we can cover more area with fewer speakers. And they're specifically voiced for a conferencing application where speech intelligibility is paramount. So these are going to uh, uh, ensure clear voice reproduction from the far side to make sure that uh, all the far end participants can be heard and understood uh, locally in the classroom. And then our TC5 uh, to Sierra Connect is our media connection point for all the devices in our in our complete system. So the microphones, amplifiers, USB extenders, all and our DSP all plug into this device, and it handles all the media traffic uh, without any outside intervention. So not only does it offer PoE power for the devices that need it, but it's setting up the media network without uh, any configuration needed. Just to touch on other things we need for the uh, for remote participation, obviously we're going to need a USB camera. Biamp doesn't make a USB camera, but I just want to point that out because my uh, diagram has one. And then obviously we'll need a display or a projector so that the instructor can display their presentation uh, up to the class. Um, so uh, we need one of those. And then we need a way to connect the BYOD, uh, bring your own device laptop to the system. Typically that's handled with wires. So you can see here, we've got the instructor laptop plugged in with an HDMI cable for the display and a USB cable for the um, USB camera and the AV system in the classroom. This is a wired connection, meaning they're gonna have to touch the cables. If this is a shared classroom, that means that multiple instructors are gonna be touching the same wires. If a student needs to show their screen, do they need to touch that cable as well? So we're really trying to minimize our con contact points these days. Um, how do we uh, take this and uh, make it safer, make it contactless? Um, that's That's sort of the goal in all this. So, um, here's our typical wired bring your own device system. It's basically the same, uh, same setup that I had circled here. We've got our USB camera and our AV equipment, uh, going through a hub into the, into the laptop. Um, we have a device that will facilitate this connection wirelessly. And that is the Modena hub family, uh, that we are, um, that we, uh, we acquired this company um earlier this year and uh it was branded uh hrt from a company called uh or i'm sorry the company was called hrt the the device was the huddle hub um, we are rebranding it to the modena family so the modena one and the one plus and what this is going to do it's going to take that wired system and act as the interface for our av equipment so not only does it have wireless sharing uh, out the HDMI to the display in the room, but it also has wireless USB to our AV equipment in the room. So now someone can come in, bring their laptop, connect to the Wi-Fi, and be able to use these devices as if they were connected to them wire wired, but uh, but they didn't have to touch anything. They're maintaining uh, just touching their personal device, so uh, it's a it's a whole lot safer in a classroom environment. So uh, what this looks like on our uh, example, take these wires and get rid of them. Now we're uh, interfacing with the Modena hub and we're uh, now the instructor is free to move around the classroom if needed with their laptop. Uh, they can connect from anywhere in the classroom. They don't have to be tethered to the uh, wall plate where these connections are located. 
Um, it's really a, a, a wireless uh, presentation and USB system at this point. So what does the user experience look like for this? Um, we have an application or applications available for Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. So uh, a consistent user interface across all the platforms. Very easy to use. Here's the UI. You connect to the room and you get three choices. You can present, uh, which will uh, do exactly what it sounds like. Take your screen and put it up to the display. You can add a presentation. So if someone's already presenting and you wanna also share your screen, up to six participants can share their screen at the same time. And uh, Modana Hub will tile that uh, uh, on the display uh, so you can get multiple, uh, multiple screens for a collaboration uh, type application. And what's really cool is the third option is actually receive the presentation. So if you're seated in the back and you can't see the screen very well, um, you can actually connect to the room and pull down whatever's being presented through Modana Hub and it will open up locally on your screen so you can follow along closely. So um, that's a really cool feature that, uh, that we're able to do with that as well. That's the app. If you don't want to install an app or you're visiting a school and don't have the uh, infrastructure to install the app, um, we can do a browser-based experience uh, that doesn't need to install an app. It's, uh, uh, we have separate drivers that are available for this browser experience. You can uh, just dial in the IP address that's shown on the welcome screen and you'll be able to share your screen uh, very quickly from any, any of the major browsers. On the wireless USB side, uh, any webcam, mic, or speaker, or all-in-one device can uh, interface with the Huddle Hub, uh, with the Modena Hub, and it will give you, it will give the BYOD laptop connections to those devices as if they were connected wirelessly. So it's the same workflow that we're all used to now. Uh, we Maybe we weren't familiar with this at the beginning of the year, but now everybody knows how to go into Zoom and change your uh, microphone and speaker and camera. So we're not changing that workflow. We wanna make sure that everybody's familiar with it. When you install our drivers, you gain access to an option called Modana Hub for your camera, microphone and speaker. When you select that and you join a room, now your audio and video are passing through whatever devices are plugged into the Modana Hub. So it kind of acts as an intermediary driver to gain access to the devices plugged into Modana. Since we're leveraging just a, a standard USB driver, our uh, Modana Hub is supported by any uh, UC codec that uses USB input to a laptop. So. Um, these are the major players these days, and we can we can work with everything. Important uh, to note about the network, uh, we're very flexible as, uh, in terms of the network. You notice at the beginning there were two versions of Modena Hub. There was the the Hub and the the One and the One Plus. Essentially, the One is for wired connections. So you can see here we're wiring into an existing network. We can also do an, a standalone mode where the One Plus has its own built-in uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. So we could do a standalone if you have a, a you know, a Zoom cart or something that uh, can get moved around um, to multiple classrooms as needed. Uh, this can be its own uh, standalone system, so you can facilitate that wireless sharing uh, just on its own. And then the One Plus also has a uh, wired connection so we can have sort of a hybrid model where maybe a guest uh, guests are allowed to join via Wi-Fi, but we have a uh, wired connection for uh, people on the corporate network. So to recap for our contactless AV, um, we wanna create a learning environment that engages students. We can do that with our microphones and with our DSP system. We can uh, maintain the learning environment regardless of what it looks like uh, six months from now. Uh, with our beam tracking microphones, there's no need to reprogram when furniture gets moved further away. 
uh, our DSP is handling all the audio processing uh, without the need for uh, for changing that. Um, so we can definitely support simultaneous and in-person, simultaneous in-person and remote learning. Um, everybody can be understood, uh, and uh, and there's no uh, that will keep students engaged when they can hear each other well. Minimizing the contact between the instructor and students with Modena Hub. Now we can facilitate that wireless connection, uh, not only just to present the screen, but also to connect to the AV equipment in the classroom. You don't need to uh, touch anything, just bring your laptop. And since we're leveraging the known workflow for soft codecs these days, um, it's very easy to operate once it's set up. Last, uh, second to last thing I want to talk about uh, is our UC platform compatibility. Like I mentioned before, we've got um, uh, we Modena is uh, able to work with all sorts of uh, UC platforms. The Tessera system has uh, partnered with uh, the top three: uh, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom, uh, to have certified solutions available that offer. Mute sync. So when you mute the meeting, it's going to change the, the LED color on the microphones. Um, and we're going to uh, the soft codecs are able to actually pull off um, or or stop their audio processing to to let the biamp take over. And we also what I wanted to show were these four room deployment packages that we just recently uh, released that make deploying these systems even easier. So uh, in a, in a classroom or in a school environment, we would have, you know, X number of classrooms where they're all roughly the same size. They would all roughly need the same uh, AV footprint in order to facilitate this blended learning. So we can use these system bundles that Biamp has, uh, has has released to make that easier. So these are just single SKUs. This one happens to be the large room bundle, and what this is is this is a complete AV audio system in a box. So it comes with your, basically everything that I showed on that classroom system, two mics, four speakers, the Tessera Connect to glue everything together, your USB connection to the to your laptop or the Modena Hub and a uh, Tessera Forte to, to run the show. Um, we even include the uh, interconnect cable. So the idea is, is if you've got six classrooms, you just need six bundles and uh, you'll know that you have everything that you need to make those uh, connections work. In addition to that, uh, we're also including a, a room deployment tool for uh, rapid repeatable deployment. So since we know what gear is going to be connected to these bundles, uh, we have sort of um, vetted and uh, and complete initial configurations for these systems that you can just connect all this, all the cabling together, connect to the box, and without jumping into the Tessera software, you can actually get this starting point going just by deploying it through the room deployment tool and, and then doing some quick con, uh, uh, commissioning with these radio buttons. So uh, very quick to deploy a classroom, very simple. It sort of, uh, it feels like once the, once more schools decide that this is the direction they need to go, they're going to need these systems very quickly. So this will help with that, um, not taking a lot of time to commission each room. We can just sort of uh, set it up, deploy it, and move on. Um, it is worth noting, once the system is deployed with the room deployment tool, we're not locking anything out. So uh, your AV integrator will be able to come back in and do final tweaks and make all the uh, uh, make sure that the room is is tuned uh, to its full extent. These are just sort of starting points to uh, to to get that uh, programming time uh, lower. So for our checklist, we'll add efficient and repeatable deployments with our room bundles. Our uh, everything uh, connecting via category cable and the room deployment tool. Uh, we're really streamlining system commissioning to. Uh, really get this uh, get these rooms up and running quickly because uh, we're in the middle of the pivot and we're going to need to uh, make these 
changes in deployments very quickly uh, as soon as we know what direction to move. Uh, we have a design guide available. Uh, if, if you want more information, I believe we'll send it along with the recap of this, um, uh, this webinar uh, that has basically all the information that I just talked about, your product list. It's got uh, you know, more details on interconnecting everything and all that stuff. So we'll make sure that you have that. Um, and then last but not least, um, moving more towards the uh, lecture hall type uh, education spaces, let's talk briefly about crowd mics. Crowd mics is a audience engagement tool. This is another company that Biomp purchased um, last year. And the really cool thing about crowd mics is that it puts a wireless microphone in every attendee's pocket because at this point, pretty much everybody has a smartphone of some kind. So whether it's Android or iOS, there's a crowd mics participant application right here that allows uh, audience participation uh, over Wi-Fi uh, with your mobile phone. It's very easy to use. It just, uh, you hold down on the screen when it's your turn to talk, and then you talk into your microphone as normal, and it is broadcast out to the, um, to the lecture hall uh, through the atom, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, that's the sort of the central unit of uh, crowd mics. In addition, since we're on a smartphone, we might as well take advantage of that technology. So we can do cool things like polling. The moderator can set up a, uh, you know, a quick Q&A, some yes, no questions, or a multiple choice question, short answer question, and uh, can actually push that question out to all participants. It'll show up on their phone and they can make a choice uh, like that. And then the moderator can then send the results to a display in the room uh, or push it back out to everybody so everybody can see what the results of the poll were. Um, another feature is if someone's too shy to ask their question out loud, they can type a question and send it to the moderator. So you can still ask your question even if you're not comfortable with speaking. Um, and then the moderator has a list of all the questions that are asked via text, and they can address those independently um, uh, in, a, in a less um, public uh, way. Uh, there's a built-in secure web page for configuration. There's a whole bunch of information on Cornerstone about this. If you go to support.biamp.com, there's a whole crowd mic section where there's a lot more information about setting up and best best case or use cases and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, there are logs that are available that show all the questions that were asked and the results of polls, but we don't keep any identifiable information. We just say this many number of users voted this way and somebody asked this question. We don't keep any personal identification uh, when we create those logs just for um, safety's sake. So real brief on how CrowdMics works. Uh, the Atom right here is the uh, pre-configured hardware device. This is sort of the brain of the of the crowd mics. It is running the um, it is running the events when a moderator creates them. It's connected to the room's AV system. There's USB audio. There is uh, balanced and unbalanced audio, and then there's also HDMI to display the poll results, or uh, you can display questions. You also connect to the room access point, uh, and then all the devices need to be on the same subnet as the Atom in order to join the event. So it's all happening over Wi-Fi. Uh, this is a basic drawing of it. You have the moderator and the attendees. Uh, the moderator can be on a, on a tablet, phone, or you can use the moderator app through a browser. And you're connecting HDMI to the display. USB to the room's audio system, and then your Wi-Fi is what's facilitating that uh, connection. So by placing a microphone in every pocket, we're creating a simple, extraordinary experience for attendees in, in lecture spaces and everything. So a uh, recap uh, of uh, what we went over today. Our conferencing technology will easily enable blended learning in environments 
uh, in classroom environments where we need participants to be able to hear and be heard both locally and remote. Uh, the Modena Hub family is going to easily uh, add contactless presentation and USB to a classroom. Uh, the UC bundles with that are pre-configured and have everything you need in one box is going to streamline deployment of all these classrooms that we need to get online. Um, and crowd mics for the higher ed of, of lecture hall type application is going to be able to put a wireless microphone in everybody's pocket so there's no need to pass around a mic or uh, set up a communal mic in the hall uh, that people can wait in line for. We want to uh, keep everybody uh, from having to uh, get in contact with uh, as few things as possible. All right, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to your uh, BIAMP RSM uh, local to you. And um, yeah, I really appreciate everybody's time. And thank you for uh, uh, for joining today.